<clears throat> check, check. One, two. <clears throat> Don't fuck up. Don't fuck your self. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Rude Cooking School podcast. I'm your host, John Hauser the Third, and with me, uh, recording with his cool gaming headset, double face palm behind him is. I was going to say, don't fuck your mother because it's Mother Day, Mother's Day coming up. But my name is Evan Bear. Oh, okay. <laughs> the worst day of the year <laughs> for restaurants. <laughs> um, I We're was doing talking K pots, so there no one's going to have to worry about us. Oh, really? Why is that? Uh, Are they? We're doing it early, and we're going to a Korean place, and no one does Mother's Day other than I don't know. If no one, no one's going to be there. It's going to be fine. Oh, that'd be nice. Like, uh, I was talking to a chef yesterday and mentioned Mother's Day and they were like, oh shit. Oh my God. Oh God. It is this Sunday, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, didn't you prepare for this? And they were just like, yeah, but oh God, (laughs) it just ruined my day thinking about it. Please tip your, if you go out for Mother's Day, tip like more than you normally would because it's literally the worst day for all of them. Everyone involved, it's the worst day. We were also talking about a restaurant, a problematic restaurant uh, off mic before recording. And I mm. have to imagine that, that place is going to suck. Oh, God. It, the One of the big problems with Mother's Day, and I rail against this every year, as dedicated listeners know, is the entitlement goes to 800 Right. Oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone thinks they should be. It's their perfect day, and it's my day, and it's like, yeah, you're one of like millions. It's okay to be feel special and have people treat you special on Mother's Day because, goddamn it, you deserve it. But don't act like that towards restaurants because they're just trying to get their work done, and they're gonna try to make you feel special. But when you go out of your way and be an asshole, you fuck it all up. You know. And yeah, I can't imagine what it's like at that place because nobody's making big tips either. <laughs> oh, and yeah, that's the other thing. And I mean, honestly, we're we're talking about a place that has armed guards outside of it, and no it's a fun. restaurant. No good. Yeah, no good. Hey, that's, mom, let's go to the place with the armed guard. Yeah, no thanks. That's that's fucking. That's wild. Like, why anybody like? That's a giant red. F- fucking flag <laughs> it's, not, it's not good it's nuts it's so nuts woof um anyway welcome to the rude cooking school podcast this is gonna be a news episode as you've seen from the title um we're gonna just talk real quick about a couple things i'm obsessed with chicago dogs this week i've made yep. a bunch i uh i made some last night they're very delicious uh I made myself two. I ate one. I reheated one today. Still delicious. And and to be fair, I only heated the dog up and had the rest of it cold, and it was awesome. Mm. Have you ever had a Chicago dog? Yeah, I've been to Chicago once. Okay. (laughs) We uh, we went to an O's game last week, and I got I got the stoplight. I got all three. I got the the red, yellow, and the the green. Oh, where was that at? What what place? Just, you know, at uh, pickles the, the vendors outside. I just got the oh okay. hot, some glizzies and a load of them there, up. Are there hot dog vendors still around the stadium? I haven't seen any. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's uh. Do they just of, not show up in like cold weather or rainy weather? Because every game I've gone to, it's been kind of that. We always go to pickles before the game, and see, I don't go to al- pickles. There's always a uh, big old vendor doing like you know bratwurst and hot dogs, and there used to be a vendor stuff. right. <laughs> Right there at the convention center, because we come up, we park across from the convention center and Uh walk up Pratt. And there's usually a couple guys on, uh, I guess, Conway Street. Yeah, usually Conway and then in front of Pickles is where where I would see them. But I I, we don't go up Conway anymore. We just take an Uber. (laughs) I will say there's a hamburger place. I think it's Fuzzy's Hamburgers. They have a stall inside, like right outside of where our... uh, our uh, section is because we got season tickets and uh the we've gone to three games the first two were like wow that kind of looks good the first time we were like wow that looks pretty good the second time the fucking line was no shit 70 deep it fucking insane i was like 
no fucking way am I standing in line for a $20 hamburger. And then on the TV, they brought a couple up to the announcers and I was looking at them. I was like, yeah, I think I'm going to have to get one of these. So we went, uh, what was it? Two weeks ago and got the fucking hamburger. It's worth $20. It was, it's a double smash burger and it has caramelized onions and some sort of sauce. It's fucking incredible, dude. <laughs> I was like, and me and Leanna were like, well, let's just share one. And within the first bite, both of us were like, I don't want to share no, this get with your own. you. <laughs> <laughs> we did want to share it, but we were both like, like legitimately worth $20. And the line, we got there and it was only like 10 people in line. And the line went real fucking quick because they were just mm. banging them out. They got a giant flat top. Really, really, really I, uh, good. I also got some boogs and I hated it. I hate boogs. I can't I can't eat there. It anymore. was the saltiest fucking thing I've I've had in a very long time. And it was like, I think, 23 bucks for a fully loaded sandwich and some fries. And uh, I put way too much horseradish on it and blew out yeah. my nose. Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah, fuzzies. F U Z Z I E S. Fuzzies burgers. Right. Ask for it by name. Yeah, I think they have a. Let's see. They have a place at Peabody Heights. They have a place at Camden Yards, and then I think they have a. What, what do you call them? The like a zombie kitchen or whatever. Ghost kitchen. A ghost kitchen. Uh, in Fells Point, like that one ghost kitchen that everybody comes out of out of Fells Point, on Ann Street. Mm. Uh, but yeah, the, really, really good. I totally highly recommend it. Um, what were you, what were you talking about? Oh yeah. Fucking Boogs is garbage. I, <laughs> I get, I get free tickets like from, uh, like every now and then that come with the meal, you know, you get a free Boogs sandwich and every time I get one, I'm like, this is trash. Like it <laughs> doesn't taste good. And, and I try to go, okay, can I get like, the rarest beef that you got and it's always just overcooked trash like it's not good yeah so yeah, yeah. and you know old people like it and out of town people don't know what they're buying so they're just like oh this is great cuz it has horseradish and onions yeah but they they've made a concerted effort to have better food at Camden Yards and I'm all for it yeah, after all the negative press they got last year, I, I mean, which was it, deserved. Almost anything's an improvement. I, I do kind of want to try the like eight foot long hot dog <laughs> with the crab dip on it. They do they, another place that's outside of our uh, section that I don't know what they're called, but they do a hot dog that's topped with cheesesteak stuff. Ooh. So it's, it's topped with steak and cheese and onions and peppers and shit. And I'm like, that's the thing that Crosby keeps going. Dad. Yeah. D- Dad. Sounds pretty good. Dad. And I'm like, no, you've already eaten a whole fucking pizza, you garbage disposal. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You know who didn't have a problem eating two whole fucking Chicago dogs last night and broccoli and a giant plate of fries? What? Your wife. Crosby. Oh. God. <laughs> Kids, monster. It's crazy. Who is cooking dinner right now? That's his new thing. Uh, He cooks dinner on Thursdays. He picks out what he likes, and he has to cook it. Leanna comes up with, like, a big list through the uh, New York Times app for easy, you know, under 30-minute recipes, and gives it to him, and then he goes, uh, that. So tonight we're having teriyaki salmon over rice with bok choy. Nice. Yeah. So he's done, like, a, a Thai meatball thing, and... He did cottage pie two weeks ago, and last week he did something that was really good that I don't remember. But yeah, oh, he uh, did um, he did um, what do you call it? Um, uh, quiche. He did a uh, quiche Lorraine. Fancy. Yeah, which is just it's egg pie with bacon. I'm so. making some sort of Dan Dan noodle thing tonight. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of noodles and sauces and stuff, uh, you got in touch with me last week because you had a <laughs> giant onion plant. Yeah, I let this green onion that I jammed into the dirt like three <laughs> years ago. I just let it grew, grow. 
and unchecked. And grow it did. I don't know if you've ever tried doing this, but you get, you know, the little bunch of scallions that you get at the grocery store. If you put them in dirt, they grow. That's and, how it started is just a scallion? Yeah. And oh, I just let it, I just let it go and it grew into like a tree. Turned into the Audrey 2 of fucking onions. Yeah, it really did. I mean, it looked like it honestly looked like that uh you know that big metal menorah they put in the inner harbor during the holiday season? <laughs> yeah. It looked like that but green and yeah. it had it had this like seed pod at the top. And it, it's been raining a lot lately, and I'm looking at this thing, and I'm like, this thing looks like it's about to fall over, and fall over it did. Oh, wow. Uh, so it it burst, like, at the very bottom where it was coming out of the dirt. Like, And, you know, the planter I have it in is not, like, super deep. Very deep, yeah. Yeah, so this thing collapsed on itself, and I'm like, what do I do with, like, a tree's worth of green onion? <laughs> <laughs> the so, irony being, once, once I diced it all up, it was barely, like, two and a half cups. Yeah, right. Uh, because there were parts of it that were really thick and like almost trunk like, you know, so yeah. I couldn't really use it. And the other thing is like when you've got a big old honking green onion and you cut that thing open, it starts to ooze like a slime comes out of it. Yeah. And it's really, really pungent, mm -hmm. very oniony. Um, and you told me you were like, well, make this green scallion dressing uh, from Momofuku. Uh, and I did. And it was ginger scallion sauce ginger scallion sauce and I made it and then we I put it over some cold noodles and I used too much <laughs> and oh, I'm really eating, I'm eating it and I'm like ah my mouth burns <laughs> like such what? ginger crazy overcooked. oh okay like ginger and onion just burning my mouth yeah uh, there's gotta be like I I use that as like a guideline and then I always add more sherry vinegar and more soy sauce sure and, and more salt. Right. Uh, well, I wound up, or at least my wife, wound up adding some peanut butter to it to uh, oh, okay, smooth yeah. it out a little bit, which is a mm. great idea, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have half a jar left, and I'm probably just going to put it on a salad and do a little cold protein with it. Maybe yeah. some, ooh, some glass noodles. That'll That's what I'll do. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that stuff is good on anything. It's, it's like the, the fucking Guy Fieri joke. It's like, that would be good on a flip-flop. Like... I love ginger scallion sauce so much and it, it goes so good. Like if you mix it with Kewpie mayonnaise, it's fucking incredible on Ooh. sandwiches. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just really good on everything. Noodles, just the best, but the stalk and the bulb is still in the dirt. So I'll, I'll uh, report back. If like I get new little, oh, it starts to fucking come back to life. Oh, we'll Jesus. see. We'll see. Um, I, uh, I've been obsessed with Thai food lately. Like, I as, want you, to, as you should. Well, yeah, I went to H Mart because I, I really wanted to do um, like lettuce wraps. Mm -hmm. So I, I went and got, you know, did like chicken lettuce wraps and bought like, you know, the what you think is not that much Thai basil. And uh -huh. then when you open the package, it's all the Thai basil. It's like a pound of it. So you're like, fuck, am I going to do with this? So I've been making soups and uh, wraps and doing uh summer rolls the animated summer rolls and those were fucking great so and it uh, what i wish more than anything in this world at this point is if if there were a hello fresh but it was done by h mart well there is what is it called oh there's not a hello fresh i'm sorry okay I no was that, thinking, because that's what i want have you heard of we we it's like w-e-e-e -E -E no dot com it's basically delivery H Mart where you oh. can just order anything, you know, basically from I, I'm assuming they just go to H Mart and take it off the take it off the shelves. Well either way, bring I, it to your house. I want a meal kit, baby. I want like I'm sure there is one. English instructions. And I want, you know, I just want to be able to make these zany Asian dishes that I love so much, but just don't know what to do when I walk into H Mart, you know? Yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah, let's see. Hmm, really quick. Hungry Root is a thing. But that's Asian not... Asian meal kit delivery. Is that specifically Asian? That's what it says. No. That does, no, that doesn't look Asian. They said it, though. They're fucking liars. Yeah, I think... I think... I thought it was just... Yeah, it's just plant-based. That's what I thought. Have you ever heard of HelloFresh? I don't know how to say that in Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> Uh no, it doesn't really look like there's one. I'm just, just saying like, it. Just going it, quickly. 
any of our Ellicott City listeners, <laughs> you, you want to start a million dollar business. Yeah, for like people that don't know how to make uh, certain things, that sure. would be great. Yeah. 10 of the best Asian meal kit deliveries. Taste of Asia. Okay, let's see this. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's Blue Apron. Fuck off. That's not <laughs> real. Fuck you. I mean, they have like Asian options, but I No, I'm, of course, but it's not like a specific, you yeah. know. No, I want genre specific, the whole box. Right. Right, right, right. I mean, I would I would probably also do like Mediterranean in a box, you know. But uh Oh, here's one. Here's here's a Japanese one. No. Oh. But wait a minute. It's called it's Hello Fresh again, goddammit. It. <laughs> it's it's Hello Fresh San. No, uh it's <laughs> um, <laughs> Umami Kit is what it's called. Uh, but okay. it looks like it looks like you can just buy stuff. This just looks like a site where you just buy ingredients though. Why are they called kit? Meal kit. Umami bento box. Oh, that's on Amazon. Hmm. Welcome to checking out Google. <laughs> um, yeah, well, well, if I find anything, I'll, I'll report back. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I have a bunch of, I, I try to uh, branch out with cookbooks and stuff. Like if, if I go to like to the library, I'll check out a bunch of cookbooks that I don't really know about and check out stuff. Like I have a Thai cookbook. I think I've made one recipe out because it entails re like basically stocking a whole new pantry. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like getting yeah, a bunch yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. that like you'll use, I'm going to use one. a tablespoon for. Yeah. yeah. And I don't mind doing that, but like, I, I, I'm like yeah. that with a lot of Indian spices. I have, you know, like a lot of car- cardamom and, and some mm-hmm. of that other stuff that I've used at one time in the last like three years. Oh. Uh, you know, I got it. That, that's my fault. I got to look into some more of those recipes. You know what you should do with your cardamom? What's that? Start making your own Thai. I mean, chai. Chai. Uh, yeah. I sure. can give you a recipe. Okay, do it. Yeah, it's really easy. And Read it to what, me right now. Um, eight cloves of clove. <laughs> uh, ten of clove. cardamom pods. Uh-huh, two uh-huh. two bay leaves. I also have a lot of star. I do this anise. enough to where I actually can kind of recite it to you. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's I have it. a lot of star anise too, and I, you know, yeah, I, star anise is in it. I put uh, vanilla bean. Or if you don't have that, just vanilla. Clearly tea, black tea, um, cinnamon, black peppercorns. Uh, yeah, It's really good. It's one of those things you make a big pot of it and then you have it for the week. Like you just put it in a pitcher. And it sounds and then good. You just, I mix it half and half with uh, milk to mm-hmm. go with because you already, I already put honey in it on the tea side. So you just thin it out. It's really good. Yeah, I fucked up and I tried to make my own five spice powder, which I did, but I did it in the like little single serve ninja blender, you know, the cup that you turn mm-hmm. it over and you it grinds everything up. It mm-hmm. scraped the shit out of the inside of the cup. Oh, because you're just basically cutting up bark and like shooting. Oh, it right. It's not made for it's not made for making powders. No, oh, okay. <laughs> no. I have a I have a thing that Leanna bought me. It's got two. um little carafes one is a spice grinder and then the other one is like a four bladed mixer so like when i make ginger ginger garlic salt paste i just put it all in there the blades yeah i gotta get one of those because it's it's such a little device that saves you so much fucking time without a doubt like i buy bulk peppercorns and then you know take a quarter cup grind it and have fresh black pepper for fresh into pepper yeah, yeah for for like two weeks and i just put it in a you know one of those wooden you know pincher bowls yeah uh, with a cover someone for our wedding gave us um like a cream and sugar little tea set mm. and I, I put salt and pepper in it <laughs> yeah yeah because nobody yeah that makes sense um so oh what i was getting to is i was going to like tomorrow is crosby's last uh dance of the year we have everybody over. I make pizzas and I was trying to, I was like, maybe I'll make the fourth pizza be, cause I make four sheet pan pizzas. I was like, maybe I'll do like a Thai inspired, like Thai chicken pizza with, cause I'll make like a, you know, a Thai basil pesto and chicken. 
And then Leanne was like, just make another cheese. It's fine. That's all everybody <laughs> wants. All, all the kids want is the cheese. And Why are there peanuts on this pizza? Yeah, well, that was going to go on the pizza too because that's, that's, that's one thing that I always buy at H Mart. Just a bag of peanuts that then you can roast at home sure. and throw your own salt on it. It's so fucking good. Uh, H Mart. I got blood sausage from there uh, a couple weeks ago that it was just hanging out. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat that blood sausage. And it was different because it was blood sausage that's mixed with glass noodles. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Inside the sausage. It's really good. And it came with like this really, um, it's like a traditional Korean uh, salt mixture that you dip the sausage in or pour over the sausage. It's fucking delicious. Sounds delightful. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, All right. Anything else you want to talk about food wise? Well, uh, Sunday was Cinco de Mayo, and I we I made enchiladas. It was nice. Um, oh, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't even make a goddamn because we don't. Yeah, fuck that white ass bullshit thing where everybody gets drunk. I, I'm trying to think of what else I've been making. I did grill burgers a couple of times, and it was the first time I've done it in a very long time, and it was pretty pretty fucking good. Yeah, I was gonna say, was it how satisfying was that? <laughs> yeah, and I, and I made a I made a katsu pork last night, Ooh. and it was I used my cast iron to like deep fry yeah. basically and it was it was good it was real good nice this was a kind of a thin pork chop pork loin that i used in a it just perfectly fried you know nice deep crunchy crunch to the panko like delight we we deep fried uh i bought some cod and we deep fried i cut it into like fingers and we did it for fish tacos nice but i had to bow out because I started not feeling good last week, which is why I didn't do the podcast last week. Um, and Leanna finished it, and the directions I gave her for making the beer batter were not great because I was just like, uh, tablespoon. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> tablespoon. Just, like, just put a tablespoon of, of cornstarch in the, it's fine. And then uh, it didn't get terribly crispy, but it was still delicious. Like, I love uh, fish tacos, man. They're so good. Hell yeah. Uh, and speaking of fish tacos, food news. <laughs> news, 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 everybody. <laughs> That's called a terrible handoff, everybody. Um, me just going fish tacos, news. News. And, well, what I was getting at is one of the things I like to put on my fish tacos is sriracha. Mm -hmm. Would you imagine there's another sriracha shortage coming? I could believe it entirely because I, I learned the full story of the Hoi Fong dynasty and the, the legal issues that have been beguiling them for the past, God, I've like seven or eight years at this point. Well, we're going to go into it. Okay. Uh, then maybe we should because yeah. I, I what I've learned primarily is that you know for, for as long as Hoi Fong has been in business, it was the one pepper coming from the one farm. And now yes. for reasons uh, – when you get a bottle, it may differ in color because the peppers are just coming from all over the place. Yeah, and uh, the they left the company that they bought from, and we've we've touched on this in the past. They kind of left the company that they were buying from in the lurch. Yes, and, and kind of screwed them over. And there's like lawsuits and everything. Yes, and we're gonna get into that. Uh -huh. And the pepper company might get the last laugh interesting so um over the past few years fans of hoi fong sriracha the hot and garlicky chili pepper sauce with the iconic rooster bottle and the green cap have experienced a roller coaster of emotions and heartbreak because especially during covid they couldn't find the goddamn bottles and there was a point where uh people were selling the bottles like online <laughs> because of course they were because people were awful fucking money monsters for $30 and people were buying them. Like it's, it's pretty easy to just print that label out yourself. And like <laughs> you could order on a sticker mule or something and put it on just a blank bottle. It's fine. Yeah, it's true. You know what else is, else is really easy making your own fucking garlic sauce. It, it is pretty fucking easy. Even the fermented stuff is uh, pretty basic. Um, 
So the Washington Post reports that after years of wavering ability and recipe change, Hoi Fung is facing severe weather that threatens its pepper supply. Mm. Conditions that could lead to yet another sriracha shortage. But um, I'm going to get into that Washington Post article after this because they did a taste test of Hoi Fung compared. So the people that they fucked over with the peppers mm-hmm. were like, what are we going to do with all these peppers? Let's make our own sriracha. Yeah, yeah. Fuck them. It's pretty easy. So, yeah. So they did it, and now they're like number two in the sriracha game, basically. Good. And a lot of people swear by them because their shit tastes like original sriracha. Oh, yeah. Surprise. It's the, it's the, it's the legacy it's, pepper. It's the pepper, right. Um, Hoi Fong recently canceled all forthcoming shipments to wholesalers and notified them that sriracha production is on pause until after Labor Day. Um, nearly four months from now, um, in my brain, I went, Oh, well, that's not bad. Labor day is like in a couple weeks. I always get Memorial day and Labor day mixed up because I don't care about either one of them. Um, there is currently a severe drought in Mexico where Hoi Fong's red winter jalapeno peppers are grown and the high temperatures and dry conditions can cause the plants to stop ripening altogether, never achieving their prize red color. Is that what happens to all my peppers in the summer? Am I, is that what's going on? Yeah. I, always get, I always get jalapenos that work out kind of good and then fish peppers that don't do dick. Yeah, the fish peppers are finicky, uh, and but, but most of the jalapenos like – I, I like to get them in between when they're multicolored because mm-hmm. once you once you make a hot sauce, it's orange. Hence, when I used to make it professionally, I called it Oreo sauce because it was orange. Nice. I've got what? a I I have a sriracha recipe right here. I've had it on my Google Docs for uh over, god damn, twelve years at this point. Because you when should I was, post that to the rude page. Maybe I will, Millhouse. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I when I was. Working out of Ostrowski's, I was making this stuff by the bucket full. That orange sauce was really good. I will. So I'm going to give you the recipe right now. So here we go. You take yourself a pound of peppers. They could okay. be serranos. They can be jalapeno. It don't matter. You take 22 grams of garlic. Okay. 42 grams of brown sugar, or just sugar, and 14 grams of salt, and then you blend it all up and let it sit there for about five days stirring it maybe once every two days Uh, and then add 90 milliliters of vinegar to kill the fermentation and boil it and then bottle it and you're done huh yes that's pretty goddamn easy it's very easy (laughs) yeah but it tastes so good yeah it and it like when i was writing for the who did i do that for i i think it was the sun i did an article on making your own hot sauce and so many people got in touch with me and were like, I never knew. I never knew how easy it was. Like, yeah, dude, it literally is just blending up. Fucking- it, it is one of those things that once you discover how easy, there's no right. magic. To, you just like, you blend it all up and you strain it through a thing and it's, you put it in a bottle. That's and now it. you know why some fucking meth head in Arkansas has fucking, you know, prolapsed asshole sauce. Right, right. And he made himself because any fucking idiot can literally do it. Yeah, and then you print out a stupid looking label and you put it in a shop that's in the Inner Harbor and somebody buys it and it sits in, in their little collection for the rest of their life. Yeah, they never try it. Fiery <laughs> Camel never... Toe it's not yeah. sauce. <laughs> yeah. Tumultuous Taint Sauce. If you want to find out the dumbest names of uh, Pepper, we did an episode on it. Just look up Rude Cooking School Hot Sauce. Mm. We did an episode on the worst fucking names I could find and they were woof. They were something. Oh, shit. I forgot to tell you this. Or maybe hmm. I didn't. Did I tell you this? That the wedding favor at our wedding was the hot sauce that I made. Uh, it was the green sauce. I think I gave you a bottle of it a long time ago. It was very good. Crosby loved it. And I have I have many more bottles and you can have them. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. That was actually the first hot sauce I think Crosby ever like legitimately was like, can I put that on my food? Like, yeah. Because that, that, it that- was so fruity. Y- yes, that recipe is a bit different because it has like lime juice and cumin and uh, cilantro in it. So it's like it's a completely different, you know, little little guy. Mm-hmm. It was great on fish. Yeah, I think I think we were I think that's what we were putting it on. I think I because I'm a big cod fan. I was putting mm. it on cod. Mm. It was really fucking good. <clears throat> so um, let's see. According to a letter obtained by the Post. 
the company says the peppers haven't achieved the ideal shade. They're still too green and it would affect the hue of the finished product. As such, Hoi Fong will wait until the next growing season later in 2024. But that's also fucking over the other pepper place, like the pepper place that they're using now. If they're not taking the product. Yeah. Why, what? why won't Hoi Fong just put out a green fucking sriracha? Who gets could, shit? They, you can do it. I, I did could. it. <laughs> it's just fucking jalapenos. Like it does have m- more of a vegetable-y flavor though. Once if it's green, sure. The, the red ones are a lot sweeter. More like borophil. We get it, <laughs> but like you know chlorophyll. But it would still taste delicious, and you could come up with a new product. Sure. You know, just pivot. You fucking ding dongs. Like I really don't like. Like I'm never buying another bottle of Hoi Fong Sriracha after what I've read. So you don't you don't have to. Yeah. Uh, to the casual observer, this shortage might not seem like the biggest deal. After all, there are dozens of varieties of Sriracha available in most supermarkets and specialty shops whose supply doesn't appear to be threatened as Hoi Fong's is. Yet the prevalence of Hoi Fong is arguably the reason that any other brands have prolifer- pro- proliferated in the United States at all. The product debuted in 1980 at a time when America's global cuisine was more siloed, and it took decades for Hoi Fong to make the leap from Asian supermarkets to the American mainstream. Even now, in an age of endless fusion and experimentation, the rooster bottle's sweet heat and garlicky punch maintains a dedicated fandom, which is why you see so many fucking morons with tattoos. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was that was what like the mid 2010s that yep. sriracha hit peak annoying and oh, yeah, and it was just like I put that shit on everything and I'm like, like when people made it their personality, yeah, yeah. I mean, for a condiment that's been around since like the 80s, I'm like, what? Okay, all right, sounds good. Yeah, I had a friend who literally was like, would he had like a little bottle of sriracha he traveled with, and I was like, it doesn't go, it doesn't need to go on everything. It it doesn't. There's I, no, there's no reason. I have found that, like, even if I try to, I, what I will do if I'm having some, uh, some French fries, I'll do a little, a little squirt in my ketchup and blend sure. it up, just to give it a little extra wang, a little yeah, kick. That's great. But by itself, uh, I can't think of a whole lot of things. It's to me because to me it is, act and act. It's just a hot sauce. It's not like a, it's not like a ketchup to me. No, uh, it it is a little too spicy to just dump on. You know whatever some people do and it's i mean i don't mind it by you know straight up but you know like it it needs to be mixed with things like the the other thing is like you can go down to restaurant depot and get the generic version for like a case for like 12 bucks right it'll it'll last you your entire life right and it's pretty close to tasting the same it is especially when you add it to like a stew or A food that it has more than two ingredients. But I think gonna... a lot of people really like the, the straight source stuff, you know, like. Yeah, they think it's fine. fancy, but but it hasn't been from one farm in a in a while. Right. So, so you're, you're still just indulging in a, a sort of, I mean, at least it's one facility. It's not like owned by Kraft or you know, right. yum, yum Brands or yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, totally. It's good that it's still Hoi Fong. You know they're starting to get a little, you know, they're just no, nah, they're 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 being they're, dicey because they right. they they used to do their contracts on a handshake and then the guy just decided to fuck fuck off and like right. you know wasn't going to pay the farmer and the farmer's like, I got to take you to court. <laughs> yeah. So quote, it's a double edged sword when the success of a particular sauce bec- comes from a jalapeno that can only be produced in California or Mexico. Unquote. Climate scientist Guillermo Murray, uh, torta. Rolo told the post, yes, California, until a protracted legal dispute dissolved the partnership in 2016, Hoi Fung's peppers were supplied by Underwood Ranches, a California based business that now produces its own competing sauce. Hoi Fung is facing severe weather that threatens its pepper supply that can lead to more uh, shortages. This is far from the first hiccup uh, Hoi Fung has experienced in recent, recent years. In 2020, like so many other consumer packages, the Sriracha experienced shortages due to the combination of COVID spurred supply chain issues and a drought that was affecting crops. This is going to be like, we're going to be doing more like, oh, the crops are fucking up because of climate change. 
Sorry, have you, guys. Have you have you explored like bird flu and how that's going to be fucking up? Like, I don't ev- even want to get into that. Everything it's nasty right now. Yeah, I, I was like, people are com- whining and complaining about inflation at the grocery store because eggs are six fifty, and I'm like, yeah, it's because all the birds are dead. Yeah, like, we're about to deploy millions and millions of vaccines so that we can save the chickens when like all these other weird animals are getting it like harbor seals and polar bears and shit. Yeah, it's fucking crazy. Cows are going down all over the place. Milk's tainted. Deregulation, yeah. everybody. It's great. Ooh, I need my raw milk. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. The raw, like raw milk's dicey on a good day. Yeah. You know, like when, when you introduce bird flu into it. Oh. <laughs> um, However, when the company suspended production again in 2022, citing similar climate issues, Underwood Ranch told CNBC in 2023 that it could have met the demands had it uh, still been Hoifong's supplier. The latter had instead been sourcing its pepper from Mexico and was thus facing down Mexico's drought. And probably the reason that they were getting Mexican uh, peppers is because they were probably cheaper. Oh, yeah. Um, By a lot, probably. So, yeah. You know, this is what they're doing, blah, blah, blah. So let's get into uh, Hoi Fong and. Um... Should be noted also, if you have four pepper plants and you grow them throughout the season and you pick those peppers and you freeze them, That's you'll have like peppers. you'll have like eight pounds of peppers by the yeah, time you're done. It's a lot of fucking peppers. It's a ton. It, my, it's, my... it is crazy how like how many peppers a pepper plant, like a little pepper plant that you can go to like Ace Hardware and pick up. Yep. Will be fucking kick out more peppers than you know what to do with like i i did when i had a bigger back patio i grew a lot of peppers and i had to take like a shitload of them make them into one of those bouquets and just string it up and dry them out Mm -hmm. and it's still in my kitchen like we just don't use them that much yeah like so see that that you take that and you make you make uh like salsa roja from yeah i mean i'll peel one off on occasion when I make like a kettle of chili, but I, it's just like, I'm not using peppers every day, right. uh, but I should probably start looking into it. Cause I still, have I like can s- give you a really good <laughs> salsa roja or, or even like maybe a pepper relish. Or, but if it's for the dried stuff, you want to, you want to make like, you know, taqueria style salsa roja, which okay. is basically no vinegar, just hot. Or you can do like, um, Salsa matcha, which is like, you know, those peppers and then some really like chili Colorado or something that's like really chill and not so hot, but with a bunch of like uh, peanuts and sesame seeds. Mm. And then you fucking blend all that shit. It's so delicious. And it's like you kind of toast the peppers till they're almost burnt. So it's like a real smoky flavor. It's so good. Yeah. I'm just and saying. It's, it's good. I have, I have like seven pounds of peppers in my freezer. And yeah. I'm like, I'll eventually use them all. <laughs> One of these days, Peppers, I still see you. Um, see, that's when you just make a giant mess of like fucking uh, like uh, what do you call it? Pozole. You know what I'm saying? I'll probably pickle a shitload of them. Yeah. Because um, yeah, those totally. are you could just use those all the time. So we talked about the problems they were having with Underwood. Um, so. uh Let's see. I'm going to skip some of this stuff. So Craig Underwood, the uh, owner of Underwood Ranches, who with his main buyer gone, was sitting on a massive amount of peppers. He did something that sounds like it's straight out of a Hollywood script. He started a rival brand, producing his own line of hot sauces, including a signature sriracha that bears the logo of a dragon in place of his former partner's rooster and a black cap that uh, replaces the green sauce it's, instead of the it's, green one it's a pretty great bottle it looks really cool it looks kind of like the cobra kai of hot sauces <laughs> to be to be fair title of the episode <laughs> um some fans are saying that underwood's sriracha blend tastes like the old hoi fong stuff that is because it's made from the the peppers that were og um so when the two nemesis brands come together they tasted both, right? So let's see what they had to say real quick. So there's a bunch of pictures of all the stuff that they made. So roasted broccoli tartine with spicy whipped beans, which looks really good. Salsa. So this is kind of the stuff they made with it. Salmon with sriracha and lime, which looks good. BLT with sriracha mayo. 
Um, sheet pan duck with orange sriracha glaze. That looks fucking awesome. And baked sriracha chicken breast. Um, I'm assuming they made all these and did the taste test. Uh, roast beef bon mi with daikon carrots and sriracha aioli. Squash with chili yogurt and sriracha sauce. And turkey cranberry and sriracha strata. Wow, these are fancy. This is all from the Washington Post, by the way. Um, the Underwood Sriracha immediately jumped out as the more acidic of the pair, while the Hoi Fong had a sweeter note. The latter seemed more redolent of garlic, too. The new brand, perhaps because of its pedigree, it's owned by a pepper farmer, <laughs> after all, seemed to have the predominant, more predominant pepper flavor. Um, and everyone agreed that it packed slightly a little bit more heat and a deeper flavor than the original. Hoi Fong's uh, offered a one-two punch of garlic and then the sweetness. So it seems like, you know, they ultimately were like, well, it's really close and we can't figure out which one we like better. But, you know, I would go for the the other one. So this is the this is the thing. You can snag um a bottle of Hoi Fong for about five bucks. And then you can get the other stuff, I think two bottles for eight bucks. So it's way cheaper. So, or like, make your own <laughs> or make your own. Yeah. I mean, honestly, now's the time to do it. Go and get a cheap pepper plant, put it in a pot. You really don't have to do shit to it. Like it will fucking grow. You might have to water it every now if it's a little droughty. Water it. And, but also if it gets stemmy, start to like bush it a bit. Cause that's how you're going to get more peppers. What's that mean? Uh, so kind of like what you do with a tomato plant, you know, if you've got like too many stems coming out of it, like mm-hmm. you clip a couple of them so that it will, it'll get rounder and more bushy. Okay. Um, and then you'll get more peppers. Uh, the fish pepper, I don't even know what I did. I like, I didn't do shit to that thing. And it just like, it gave me hundreds of peppers wow. throughout the season. Um, I guess, I don't know. I guess it, it was just all the heat in the uh, direct sunlight that I had in my back patio, but um, I, I've yeah, tried I, so many times and it just doesn't work. Hmm. It I could crazy. Never, I could only on occasion get those those wacky flavors that they come or flavors colors that they come in mm, like purple, stripes, yeah, yeah, striped white, uh, all the different colors. But at one point, I had a couple of them like that, and I'm like, but I I I just want to keep it like that. <laughs> yeah, you absolutely can't. You can't take pictures. Yeah, because um, they'll ju- they'll just turn red after like a week. Yeah. Um, Philly has a brand new cheese vending machine. Okay. And it's filled with everything you need for a charcuterie board. <laughs> this sounds like it's going to end in tragedy. Uh, Remember that love robot that got the shit beat out of it? And yeah, yeah, yeah. The hitchhiking Philly? robot. Yeah. It's all that poor guy. <laughs> they, they beat him up. Um, so Perry stead dairy located in old oldie. It's got an E on it. Old Kensington neighborhood has officially opened the city's first self-service cheese dispensary. And suing those craving cheese, be it breakfast, lunch, or dinner time, or away into the wee hours of the night, can get whatever they wish. Perrystead dairy owner uh, Yoav Perry shared with Travel and Leisure that he wanted to bring his customers, quote, immediate satisfaction, end quote, whenever they were looking for a bite. As to how he got the idea, he said he was inspired by Europe because they just have fucking crazy vending machines all over there. Anyway, quote, we thought a 24-7 service dispensary in our pollinator garden would be a fun convenience and a product showcase, a mere feed away from the cheese that is made and aged. And quote, uh, inside the machine, guests will find a variety of the farm's cheeses, including a cow's, the cow's milk called Intergalactic, which placed second in the 2024 World Cheese Awards. And even some charcuterie items like meats, preserves, and crackers to round out your snack time. And the machine is also stocked with charcuterie boards made out of marble, wood, or slate. That sounds really weird. And uh, he said he's going to start stocking cheese cheese knives too. Uh, <laughs> and for the month of May, which happens to be American Cheese Month, Perry Stead said he is also offering a limited edition cheese named Umbra, which made is made in collaboration with Murray's cheese shop in New York. We all know Murray's cheese shop. That place is like goddamn cheese heaven. Um, as to how the community is responding to the new vending machine, it appears to be a resounding hit. 
if you take a look at the comments on the cheese producers instagram people are leaving words of praise like i'm ready for this idea to become the next trend and i've got cheese here this afternoon and need to get another fix soon uh and that's it we've reached the pinnacle of civilization because uh, i always imagine that's how all those people sound like on yep. fucking any everything's everything's blown to the nth degree because they're all fucking dangerous. hyperbola yes no one knows what hyperbole is but they all do it all the time uh that's the end of that story on to this so was it you and i were talking about hot dogs back in the day that were stuffed yeah <laughs> they had like chili and shit in them uh, yeah guess who heard our plea uh oscar meyer Ooh. so on tuesday jalapeno oscar meyer, popper hot dog you're not far off son oh boy on tuesday oscar meyer introduced its latest innovation innovation from the 80s you fucking ding dongs stuffed dogs with three different flavor fillings quote our ambition is to spark smiles and be the industry indisputable leader in taste, which is why we, who, who, who's this person sound like uh, it's a woman. I'm not going to do a woman's voice. Um, which is why we reimagined the iconic Oscar Meyer wiener to meet the evolving preferences of our consumers. Molly white, the vice president of marketing for Oscar Meyer shared in a statement, whether seeking a spicy top or a pop of cream cheese, we strive to feed our fans' appetite for category offerings that are currently only available from quick service restaurants. Okay, great. The new stuffing, the new stuffed top dogs come in three new flavors: cheese, jalapeno cheddar, and chili cheese. You know what? You can guarantee with all three diarrhea <laughs> <laughs> according to the brand it took inspiration from quote unquote fans favorite why would it be quote unquote fans fans favorite restaurant offerings because millions of consumers uh, requested extra spice for their food last year alone inspiring key ingredients for new recipes including real jalapeno peppers and chilies quite literally put into the hot dogs oh god it's crazy um so people have been asking for this for a while. Um, so you're going to get an eight pack for five bucks, four ninety nine. That's not bad. Um, it's fine. Totally yeah. Fine. So be on the lookout. I'm not going to read more of this stuff because it's all boring stock market shit. And, yeah. uh, you know, we don't need to know that sales are up a whopping 10% of annual hot dog sales. We're just um, trying to really explore the niche, the evolving niche flavors yeah. that the at our consumers are craving. Yeah, it's it's so it's such fucking like, you know, our quadrilateral silos. Yeah, you know, predict that the you know whatever. What was the th the food topic news topic that was like we're utilizing AI to, to oh like, yeah 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 to make this food. Fuck you, yeah. Oh, I, speak. It, Speaking Good. of AI and robots, have have you you've seen have you heard this? Have you seen this? That uh, uh everybody's favorite governor, Ron DeSantis, banned lab grown meat in Florida, even though none of it is commercially available. <laughs> no. No. But you know, he's he's being like these are the this is the the party of the free, right? Yeah. Liber individual liberties and free market capitalism. I'm gonna ban this product because I think it's creepy. Yeah, it's not it's not the farmers that are paying the the beef industry that's paying him millions and millions of dollars. Uh, yeah, right? are the are the cow farmers afraid of lab grown meat coming for their business? Yes, right, they are. Right, like right now, though, no, I don't think so. And well, and during his little like speech about what a great law this is, uh, he was like, "Yeah, well, they're trying to take away our hamburgers. They even want to make us eat bugs." And I'm like, <laughs> well, well have you, you ever had a crab? Yeah, you ever, you ever had a lobster? Also, you you're in Florida. You're going to be eating bugs before everybody else, buddy. You don't even know. I mean, like, the rest of the world eats lots of bugs. I, yeah, I think, crickets are delicious. I think the continent of Africa would like to have a word with you. Yeah, Mexico has tons and, of fucking especially crickets. Especially Mexico. Jesus, what an idiot. Yeah. <sighs> Why people? Um, <laughs> so, do, I mean, you remember we covered a, a, a thing, a couple months back where like some senator or something was trying to get like milk can only be from fucking animals we can't call almonds almond milk uh, yeah milk well, not real milk 
I think there's you know? there has been actual movement on that uh, in uh, in terms oh, sure. of like. Reg- regulation is like well what if we just call it beverage right and there's been some eh, i guess because yeah like the the almond milk producers are like no we want people who usually drink cow milk to drink this instead and yeah. i'm like yeah but people know the difference like they know they know what they're doing especially anybody that's like going to buy an almond milk isn't looking at it and being like well it's not called milk i don't know about right. this stuff right yeah, it's fucking weird. Um, let's have an update on our favorite lemonade that's killing people. Oh, baby, Panera. Yeah. Um, so Panera has dropped the controversial charged lemonade from its menus. <laughs> <laughs> this happened just this week, by the way. It's been killing people for like four years. <laughs> In 2022... Or for two years, Panera launched its charged lemonades, which at the time it said were made with quote unquote plant based caffeine and came in three flavors strawberry, lemon, mint, Fuji apple cranberry, and mangan- mango yuzu citrus. All of them sound delightful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the lemonade was available in 20 ounce servings, which Panera said came with the quote unquote same amount of caffeine as the Panera 20 ounce dark roast coffee. I would also say that a 20 ounce coffee is too much coffee for anybody, but that's, well, but fine. also the 20 ounce lemonade probably has a bunch of ice. So it's probably not actually 20 ounces. Well, however, following three separate lawsuits about the lineup, the brand is finally phasing out the drinks. Well, the, the issue was, as CNN explained, the lawsuits <laughs> People were dying. <laughs> the high levels of caffeine available in the drinks led to, to deaths of two customers <laughs> and led to ongoing health complications for another. And other people were getting fucking crazy heart issues because... Right, right. Why is my did- pulse 108 after eating this or drinking this lemonade? So as we had talked about before, uh, a college student who had a congenial heart condition consume congenial yeah it's very polite sorry congenital (laughs) (laughs) it's not congenial sorry um so and she had a heart attack and died a couple hours later uh she did not understand that there was caffeine in the drink because she just thought it was like a regular ass lemonade right because that's what it looks like like why would you put fucking yeah um so despite her death they kept it on the menu and they kept going with it and then another person died and then I think when we were like actually reading about it, it turned out that there was like crazy amounts of caffeine comparatively to the coffee, because like you said, they had to mix it with ice. So it's like way more jacked up, I think is what the issue was. Ah. So yeah. And all the sugar and shit, like uh, anyway, can't get it anymore. Thank God. Don't don't kill yourself with fucking Panera, because I think the other person that died, the guy didn't realize that it had so much caffeine. He drank like four of them, right? And it was like enough to like kill a small elephant, basically. Um, all right, I'll let you choose. Why is cold beer better tasting? Um, Paris Paris restaurants are duping Americans. Um, or What's the last one I got here? Uh, plant-based cheese wins, then loses prestigious dairy competition. Eh, I like Americans being duped. Okay. This one's good. Because we're stupid. In the Olympic run-ups, Paris restaurants are accused of duping customers in a tipping bigger. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I thought this was about food. No, the summer 2024 is bound to be different, especially in France. What with the enormous July-August spike of an estimated 15 million extra tourists piling into the place for the 33rd Olympiad. Ugh. It's going to make Paris even stinkier than usual. Ugh. Which, actually, Paris is a very stinky. Um, in an ordinary year, France is one of the most visited countries on Earth, averaging just under 80 million international arrivals, to say nothing of native French tourists. But even for France, the extra 15 million is a big number to absorb over three short weeks. Um, In anticipation of that, prices in Paris have risen dramatically for food and drink, for methods of transportation, and for accommodation. The three most vulnerable budget areas for the travelers to the city. Um, The ticket price for a legendary Paris metro, for instance, 
by f- uh, by far the best way to get around has gone from two seventy to about uh, four bucks. Uh, not wanting to be fenced out the Olympic gold mine for service sectors, restaurants will now be beefing up prices, and worse, shocking even battle hardened Parisians restaurant goers by asking for a not so subtle table side nudging for larger tips. It works like this: you have dined well, you ask for the bill. The server, or in some cases the head waiter who is authorized to collect tabs, approaches your table with their t- tablet or card reader. They punch in your tab. The software gives you the screen and asks if you would like a tip. They lean in. As with everything in Paris, the bill is a splurge. So, uh, so you know, you do your thing, whatever. And just like that, you've been ripped off to the tune of like $30. The issue is they don't tip basically right. in Paris. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, I get what they're doing, but it's kind of sucky. Like, we we got yelled at by one guy when I was in Paris because we tipped him. And he's like, no, no, no. You don't do this. Like, I'm like. Just it consi- really- consider it a tourist tax. Yeah. I mean, you know. But they're kind of trying to. What they're, in, what they're uh, insinuating here is that the uh, they're, they're, people are being sort of uh, pushed into this, intimidated into bigger tips, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, they stand there the whole time holding the thing for you. So uh, parent Parisian restaurants already add a 15% surcharge no matter what. So you, you it's, it's built in. So Got when it. you top, when you give another 10 or 20% on top of it, you're giving them like way more. Oh, so, uh, the French. Fuck it. Um, uh, the French. <laughs> yeah. So, Basically, what they're saying is just paying cash. You don't have to worry about it, but I'm not walking around fucking anywhere with cash. You're crazy. Um, and just tell them to go fuck themselves. You, you don't don't get pressured into it. You know, treat them like you would treat an American <laughs> American waiter. Don't tip them because <laughs> you're American. Fuck that. Because shit. it's Mother's Day after all. Yes, exactly. Um, the plant based story is uh. Basically, someone made a plant-based uh, blue cheese and submitted it to a cheese competition, and it won. Okay. And then all the people that make real cheese out of cow's milk got butthurt about it and were like, yeah, you can't do this shit. It's so not they, actually cheese. Yeah, so they took them out of the winning, and then now it's like a big stink. But apparently the fucking cheese is awesome. So hey, look, I've always said if I can't tell the difference, I don't fucking care. No. And you know what? If you can make a fucking cheese that tastes like blue cheese, like out of fucking nuts and stuff. Yeah, we're going to I I, don't, I do think it. within our lifetimes we will get to the point where like perfectly good cheese is going to to not come from a cow and, and They're I'll, already doing it. There's a lot of nut cheeses that you can't fucking tell. Yeah, but I've I had wanna... a bunch that like where you take when you taste them you're like, "Come on, you're fucking with me, right?" Like, nope. No, but I, I want to buy a pound of it in a bag, shredded, and put it on a oh, pizza. Oh, I got you. I got I, you. I don't want to eat like a cube of it at a party and be like, yeah, that's fine, I guess. But no, I want to I want to make a grilled cheese with it. Oh, I'm talking about like charcuterie board cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like you get a block of it and then just chop it up and just sure. put it on some crackers and shit. No, I, I want some commercial, I know what you're saying. commercial cheese. Okay, calm down there, champ. It's Give me fine. my cheese! <laughs> uh, and uh, Esther clusters and beer are more chain like at colder temperatures. So there you go. You okay. get it, it, it doesn't taste it doesn't taste taste as ethanol y. So No, no, no. When it's, it's colder. It's amazing so what get, happens when you just add a little ice cube to some scotch. Yeah. So you can you can taste the actual flavor of the beer and not as much of the alcohol. There you go. Mm, all right. Cliff's notes on that. So there you go. Woo. That was your food news for this week. I love it. Yeah, I did too. Hope we learned a lot. I hope we uh gained a lot of knowledge. I hope we know to tell the French waiters to go fuck themselves. We should do our uh, a version of hot ones. Get you and me and Jenny and, and like. <laughs> oh, that would be fun. Get some of those butt pucker, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> we each find the dumbest sounding one we can and try and, to. And then we have to like read food news while we're eating these wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I came up with. Oh, man. While I was listening to your podcast today, by the way, it's called The City of the Breed. You should check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to it and I was like, 
I came up with a really good taste test for us on your podcast. Okay. I can't for the life of me remember what it is. I'll have to go back and listen because it, it was something that I was like, oh, this would work really well because I kind of want to watch uh, Brian squirm. Uh huh. How is he with hot stuff? I don't actually know. I think he, I mean, he, he's not like a heat seeker, but I think he can handle, you know, something spicy. Oh, I see. I see him being a giant baby about it, which would be funny. He, he also may be. I, I don't know. I don't think okay. we've ever really broached that uh, subject, but maybe we will this, this uh, next record. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll have some crossover. So uh, thank you for listening to the Rude Cooking School podcast. Um, we don't advertise, so word of mouth is how we get out. Thank you for doing that. I see you, Sweden. I see you, Norway. I see you, America. England, pick it up. Okay? <laughs> you guys you guys were pulling big numbers for us for a while. Well, I'm going there in July, so and then I'll listen to an episode. Oh, nice. So that my location data will contribute. You're going to England? Uh, yeah, we're going to oh, okay. London and Chichester. I don't know, like some, and Dublin uh, as well. Apparently, apparently, maybe. Yeah, we oh, have to okay. figure. We have to figure all that stuff out. It, before you go, let me know, and I'll hook you up with a bunch of places to eat. Yes, okay. please. That yeah. would be that would be great. Um, we we're gonna we're gonna go there next year again. Mm. We're gonna go through Europe from from England, then across to mainland Europe, down to Greece. I think. Ooh, we should do a, a a team up trip and go to Iceland and eat those hot dogs. Oh my god, tell me about it. So good. Um, I I just found out, like spur of the moment, I made a comment. Leon was like, "All right, we're booked. <laughs> we're going to Seattle this summer. <laughs> Seattle and Portland, Oregon. So that's gonna be fun. I've been researching a bunch of that stuff. So be I'll, careful of all those woke libtards up there at Portland. Yeah, fucking yeah. Christ, I've I've been to Seattle once and uh. From what I know now, it's just tech bro land. Like there's sure, no yeah. liberals there anymore. Yeah, they just, yeah, yeah. They've done to Seattle what they did to San Francisco. Oh, so. the future is bright. Yeah. Hope you know how to code. Be a dickhead. Um, but yeah. Anyway, listen to our podcast and tell people you like it and rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcast. Yeah, it's mine too. Really, really important. I'm getting to your fucking podcast. I'm talking about mine. Well, hurry up! Hurry up! I gotta make dinner. Fine. Listen to his. It's called. The city, <laughs> the city that breeds podcasts, yeah, yeah, yeah. aka the CTB show. Go to CTB dot show to find it. Our most recent uh, record uh, was with a guy named Alex who uh, has a thing called the Edgar Allan Poe Theater. They are doing an event called Doomsday this month, where they read Edgar Allan Poe literature for twenty four hours straight. And this year, they are simulcasting. Uh, in many different countries across the world. It should be very cool, and it was a fun interview. And you get to hear Brian ask the guy about uh, <laughs> the sex life of fucking okay. Edgar Allan Poe, and that guy just go like, um. uh. <laughs> <laughs> Poe got it on. He I, probably at least Poe is dipping his fucking wick in a bunch of stuff. He, he, you know, he's mostly he's, opium. Yes, and, yes. and, and, and laudanum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> laudanum tainted whiskey mm. uh but anyway check his podcast out it's really funny it's really good please do um and you'll learn about uh fairy fairy porn books which is a whole <laughs> other thing that is also true which i i felt seen because i read those books myself. <laughs> <laughs> court of thorn and roses it's great check the series out you get to listen to porn and basically war people fucking killing each other it's great mm. anyway I will see you next week. And for the Rude Cooking School podcast, I'm John Alza the Third. Don't yuck my yum. And don't uh, don't eat 3D printed chocolate. Yeah, what? Yeah, sure. Words to live by. Thanks, everybody. Have a good week. Bye.